SMERSH was an umbrella organization for three independent counterintelligence agencies in the Red Army formed in late 1942 or even earlier, but officially announced only on April 14, 1943. The name SMERSH was coined by Joseph Stalin. The main reason for its creation was to subvert the attempts by German forces to infiltrate the Red Army on the Eastern Front. The official statute of SMERSH listed the following tasks to be performed by the organization. Counterintelligence, counterterrorism, preventing any other activity of foreign intelligence in the Red Army. Fighting anti-Soviet elements in the Red Army. Protection of front line against penetration by spies and anti-Soviet elements. Investigating traitors, deserters and self-harm in the Red Army. And checking military and civil personnel returning from captivity. The organization was officially in existence until May 4, 1946, when its duties were transferred back to the NKGB. The head of the agency throughout its existence was Viktor Abakumov, who rose to become Minister of State Security in the post-war years. History on February 3, 1941, the 4th Department of GUGB NKVD Security Service responsible for the Soviet Armed Forces Military Counterintelligence, consisting of 12 sections and one investigation unit, was separated from GUGB NKVD. The official liquidation of OOGUGB within NKVD was announced on February 12, 1941 by a joint order OO151-00-03 of NKVD and NKGB USSR. The rest of GUGB was abolished and staff was moved to newly created People's Commissariat for State Security. Departments of former GUGB were renamed directorates. For example former Foreign Department became Foreign Directorate. Political police represented by secret political department became secret political directorate, and so on. The former GUGB 4th department was split into three parts. One part, which handled military counterintelligence in NKVD troops become 3rd NKVD department or OKR. The chief of OKR NKVD was Alexander Belyanov, Commissar State Security 3rd rank. On February 25, 1941 Viktor Abakumov became NKVD Deputy Commissar in charge of supervising this and several other departments. The second and most significant part went to the Defense Commissariat Soviet Armed Forces becoming its third directorate or. The third NKO directorate took over most of the fourth GUGB department sections and was headed by Division Commissar Anatoly I. Mike Heave, former and last OOGUGB NKVD chief. The third part of former OO became the Navy Commissariat Third Directorate. On top of Navy KI was Andrei Petrov and State Security Captain. Equals Operation Barbarossa equals, after the 22nd June 1941 German invasion of the USSR, and very bad situation on all fronts, Stalin on July 17, 1941 as Chairman of State Defense Committee signed Special Decree in 187-SS by which military counterintelligence was returned to the NKVD as a Directorate of Special Departments or UOO with Viktor Abakumov as chief. UOO on every level was given much more power and free hand in decision making since the creation of Sheikha famous for its brutality. Also on July 19, 1941 by the order of NKVD 00940 for the time the UOO was moved from Moscow to the city of Kribyshev. Navy 3rd Directorate was still under Navy control, till January 11, 1942 when it was incorporated into Directorate of Special Departments. On July 2, 1941 NKGB USSR was back in NKVD structure. The most important to notice is NKGB did not return as GUGB, but as separate units. The NKVD structure organization from July 31, 1941 shows really that there are independent directorates like 1st Foreign Intelligence, 2nd Domestic KI, and so on. There is no GUGB within NKVD after its official liquidation in the beginning of February 1941, after the situation on the Russian fronts became more stable, on April 14, 1943, the State Defense Committee, chaired by Stalin, ordered another split of the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs into three organizations, by decision of the Politburo of the CPSU, then WKP, 
B. and R. P40-91 People's Commissariat for State Security or was created for the second time. It was based on NKVD's directorates. The most important of them were, first INU, second KRU NKVD second department was transferred as NKGB sixth directorate, NKVD transportation directorate was absorbed as NKGB third directorate and NKVD fourth directorate was moved to NKGB with the same number. For detailed organization please see NKGB. Regulations of the People's Commissariat of State Security have been approved by SNK in Order 621-191 SS from June 2, 1943. After losing most of the operational units to the NKGB, People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs was still a very powerful government apparatus. It was responsible for public order in USSR by using heavily armed police in each corner of the country running the biggest slave labor camps under the Gulag Directorate, POW's camps and NKVD troops with very loyal and best equipped soldiers, that by the end of the war the numbers of NKVD troops were one or one half million strong with their own air force, armored and cavalry units, resolution number 414 to 138 SS ordered the NKVD's Directorate of Special Departments to be split into three separate military counterintelligence units. Within the NKO, Navy Commissariat and NKVD, respectively, as has been done in early 1941. The same order that created GUK Smirsh within the NKO created a parallel organization within the Navy Commissariat, the NKVMF. This organization was known as the Navy UKR Smirsh and headed by Peter Glykov and his two deputies Alexei Labidov and Sergei Dukovich. In reality, Glykov reported to Abakumov by then Deputy Commissar of the NKO, and Stalin's deputy. Formerly Glykov was subordinate to his superior people's commissar Nikolai Gerasimovich Kstsev, head of Navy. OKR Smirsh of the NKVD USSR was subordinate to Levren Tiberia People's Commissar of Internal Affairs. The NKVD OKR Smirsh was headed by Seaman Yakimovich and later Vismnov. Equals duties equals the GKO officially created Smirsh to ensure the Soviet Union a Euro unregistered trademark as security from internal political threats and foreign espionage, although it carried out a wide variety of other tasks between 1943 and 1946 as well. Smirsh a Euro unregistered trademark as counterintelligence operations included seeking and destroying counter-revolutionaries, finding and interrogating enemy agents, hunting Soviet agents who had not returned by the appointed date, and evaluating the usefulness of captured enemy documents. Smirsh also took an active role in the affairs of the Red Army by ensuring the good quality of Red Army facilities, improving discipline, eliminating poor leaders, and preventing desertion, self-inflicted wounds, panic, sabotage and poor discipline. Other Smirsh activities included, exposing collaborators in areas recently captured by the Red Army, exposing and punishing economic crimes such as black market activity, protecting secret material and headquarters from enemy agents and saboteurs, and determining the patriotism of those captured, encircled, and those who had returned from foreign countries. Smirsh operatives also controlled partisan operations behind German lines and evaluated the partisans' Euro unregistered trademark loyalty to the Soviet Union. Smirsh would then arrest and neutralize anti Soviet partisans, saboteurs, spies, conspirators, mutineers, deserters, and people designated as traitors and criminal elements at the combat front. The Strategic Directorate focused on counter-espionage wet operations and counter-insurgency pacification operations that answered directly to Stalin. In March 1946 Smirsh Chief Directorate was resubordinated to the People's Commissariat of Military Forces. The NKVS was later reorganized into the Ministry of Military Forces soon thereafter, and Smirsh was officially discontinued May 4, 1946. Equals other activities equals, Smirsh activities included filtering the soldiers and forced laborers recovered from captivity. 
Smirsch was actively involved in the capture of Soviet citizens who had been active in anti-communist armed groups fighting on the side of Nazi Germany such as the Russian Liberation Army, the Cossack Corps of Pyotr Krasnov, and the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists. As the war concluded, Smirsch was given the assignment of finding Adolf Hitler and, if possible, capturing him alive or recovering his body. Red Army officers and Smirsch agents found Hitler's partially burned corpse near the far one quarter of bunker after his suicide and conducted an investigation to confirm the events of his death and identify the remains which were reportedly secretly buried at Smirsch headquarters in Magdeburg until April 1970, when they were exhumed, completely cremated, and dumped in the Elbe River. Organization a separate attachment to GKO Decision No. 3222 SS have detailed the organization of Smirsch and its branches in the Army. The Smirsch organs are a centralized organization. At the fronts and military districts the Smirsch organs are subordinated to the higher organs. The Smirsch organs inform military councils and commanders of the corresponding units, troops, and organizations of the Red Army on the matters of their work on the results of their combat with enemy agents, on the penetration of the army units by anti-Soviet elements, and on the results of combat against traitors of the motherland, deserters, and self-mutilators. At the end of the Second World War, American forces examining captured German intelligence sources determined that Smirsch was composed of six directorates, six departments, and three other branches. Directorates conducted operations involving agents on the front line of the intelligence war whereas departments received and interpreted the information coming in from agents and enemy intercepts. Smirsch also ran three other groups. The Commendatura, which guarded and managed Smirsch installations and prisoners. The Troika, which acted as a military court and could administer punishment without defense from the accused. And the Administrative Bureau and Secretariat which acted as the personal staff of the Smirsch commander. Below is the organization of Smirsch based on German intelligence. The second chart shows another way Smirsch may have been organized. UK are Smirsch units at the front, GUK Smirsch directed the work of field directorates, assigned to the fronts. Those field organs were referred to as UK are Smirsch or counterintelligence directorates. The purpose of that was to distinguish them from the GUK Smirsch headquarters. The difference between GUK and UKR or OKR was in the status hierarchy in the Red Army military CI. They were ranked according to their authority. In the case of Smirsch the system of organization was, Main Directorate or GUK Smirsch, Directorate of Counterintelligence or UKR Smirsch, and Department of Counterintelligence or OKR Smirsch. GUK in Moscow consisted of 11 operational and 3 non-operational departments, a total of 646 men. For comparison GUK Smirsch predecessor, UOO NKVD Directorate of Special Departments with an NKVD consisted of 225 men in 1942. Not all departments corresponded to their UOO NKVD predecessors. With the new focus on the Germans and other enemies, two departments, the third and fourth were transferred from the NKVD NKGB. Pages 257, the third department was in charge of capturing German spies in the rear and organizing radio games with their help, and the fourth department was in charge of counterintelligence measures behind the front line. Five of the departments, the first, second, third, fourth and sixth were involved directly in investigation. The UK are smash at the front, directed the OKR's counterintelligence departments within the armies and units. Their Smirsch officers were attached to each rifle corps. The OKR at the division level consisted of 21 men, including a head, his deputy, a ciphering officer, investigators, commandant, and a platoon of guards. The OKR of each army included 57 men, while the size of the front UKR depended on how many armies composed the front. If the front consisted of five armies, its UKR included 130 officers if there were fewer armies, the UKR had 112 officers. It was different when it comes to military districts. For example Moscow Military District with was the biggest one at the time, and consisted of between 109 and 193 officers, 
they went through special training of filtering POWs. Smirsh units at the fronts were supported by NKVD internal troops for guarding prisoners, for operational work UKR and OKR Smirsh units were supported by regular Red Army service men. Smirsh front directorates were provided with a battalion, Smirsh army departments with a company, and Smirsh departments at the regiment, division, or brigade level, a platoon. Front's commanders and UKR commanding heads. Methods in its counter-espionage and counter-intelligence roles, Smirsh appears to have been extremely successful throughout World War II. Smirsh actions resulted in numerous captures, desertions, and defections of German intelligence officers and agents, some of whom Smirsh turned into double agents. Indeed, the Germans began to consider missions where their losses were less than 90% satisfactory. According to German sources, the Soviets rendered approximately 39,500 German agents useless by the end of the war. Smirsh utilized a number of different counterintelligence tactics, informants, security troops, radio games, and the passing of disinformation, ensuring both the reliability of the military and the civilian population. Smirsh set up a system of informants by sending a Smirsh officer to each battalion composed of between 1,000 and 1,500 men. Each Smirsh officer would enlist a number of residents, who recruited their own reserve resident, and between six and eight informants. Informants reported those sympathetic to the Germans, desertion, unpatriotic attitudes, and low morale and were authorized to take immediate corrective action if the need arose. Smirsh recruited between 1,540,000 and 3,400,000 informants, or about 12% of the entire Red Army. However, Smirsh coerced up to half of all of its informants to work for them. In order to secure the Red Army a Euro unregistered trademark S rear, Smirsh evacuated civilians and set up checkpoints so as to assert physical control. Next, agents sought and arrested suspicious persons, who might be German agents. Finally, Smirsh interrogated those arrested. Compared to its predecessor, Smirsh was mostly focused on enemy spies although Red Army servicemen were still under suspicion. Abakumov kept Stalin updated on all high-ranking commanders, and on the behavior of a number of leading military officers. The System of Arrests, GKO Decision No. 3222SS of, the arrest of the private or junior officer should be approved by a prosecutor. The arrest of middle-level commander should be approved by the commander and prosecutor of military unit. The arrest of high-level commander should be approved by the military council of the front and a prosecutor. The arrest of commander of the highest level should be authorized by the People's Commissar of Defense, Stalin. To confuse German intelligence with disinformation, Smirsh utilized radio playbacks and played over 183 radio games over the course of the war. Operation Opity Euro Unregistered Trademark serves as a good example of the effectiveness of these radio games. Between May and June 1943, Smirsch used three German agents to spread disinformation about the Kursk counteroffensive by suggesting the Red Army had begun to dig in rather than prepare for an attack, thus contributing to the success of the Red Army Euro Unregistered Trademark S surprise attack. Before Operation Bagration, the largest Allied operation of the Second World War, Smirsch caught and doubled a number of German agents who tricked the German military into underestimating the number of Soviet troops by 1.2 million men. Smirsch played a major role in creating and controlling partisan operations behind German lines. After capturing German-held territory and reuniting with the Red Army, Smirsch interviewed partisans in order to determine the partisans a Euro unregistered trademark loyalty to the regime. See also Military Counterintelligence of the Soviet Army, Gestapo Euro NKVD Conferences, The Gulag, Death to Spies. References External links Russia unveils Stalin's spy service BBC report on an exhibition in Moscow marking the 60th anniversary of Smirsch's founding. Track down Soviet war criminals, Ukrainian group urges, by Nathan Wilson.